Here we're in part two, we'll talk about what causes variations in the carbon isotope ratio of plants. While there was some variation associated with substrate changes, that is the isotope ratio of atmospheric CO2, most of the variation is associated with physiology and physiological processes that influence the fractionation of carbon coming into plants. So physiology matters. The carbon isotope ratio of C3 plants, which we'll focus on first, reflects the CI to CA ratio. That is, the intercellular to ambient concentrations of CO2, which is the long-term balance between the supply of CO2 through the stomates and the consumption of CO2 in photosynthesis. Carbon and water cycles are connected at a common intersection, the stomata. Here we see stomata associated with a guard cell, two cells on either side that open and allow the diffusion in of CO2 for photosynthesis, at the same time allowing for the loss of water through transpiration. So the dynamics of the stomata represent a trade-off between the CO2 uptake and water loss. The carbon isotope ratio of a C3 plant can be viewed as a metabolic set point. We'll talk more about that later, but it's basically the balance between CO2 demand and CO2 supply. CO2 is supplied by the stomata. How wide open the stomata are is called the leaf conductance, referred to as G by the letter G. Photosynthesis is consuming the CO2, so we have a supply function and a demand function, and the balance between the supply and the demand is the intercellular CO2 concentration relative to the ambient CO2 concentration. And the carbon isotope ratio of plants measures that long-term CI-CA ratio. We can show that by measuring the CICA ratio in plants in a gas exchange cuvette and measuring the isotope ratio of the CO2 that's fixed by looking at the isotopic composition and concentration of gases coming into the chamber and those leaving. Graham Farquhar and colleagues showed back in the early 1980s that the carbon isotope ratio of a plant dependent on the carbon isotope ratio of the atmosphere, minus A, which is the diffusion difference associated with 13C to 12C, and B, the net fractionation associated with RAB carboxylase in plants, times the CI to CA ratio. Given that A and B are constants, and that there's very little variation on a short-term basis, the isotope ratio of the atmosphere, the carbon isotope ratio of a plant, of a C3 plant, is telling us the CI to CA ratio, the long-term balance of CO2 supply in relative to its demand in photosynthesis. Then this metabolic set point is a, reflecting a balance between two opposing forces, the supply of CO2 and the demand for CO2. And there are genetic and environmental variations controlling the CI to CA ratio. Some features associated with the supply are how wide open are the stomates? What is the hydraulic conductivity to water movement through the xylem? What is the cavitation sensitivity? What is the rooting distribution? Each of these in some way affects the supply of CO2. The demand for CO2 depends on photosynthetic rate and photosynthetic capacity, and that's going to be related to nitrogen content and frequently associated with Leaf-Fairy index. We should expect to see many plant features correlated with leaf carbon isotope ratios because of the structural features associated with the demand and the supply functions.
Guideline number three. Changes in the CIDC ratios of C3 plants reflect both acclimation responses and adaptation differences. Let's consider adaptation first. Let's go into the desert, and in the desert what we're going to do is to sample a number of different plants out there, different genera. And what we'll do is we'll measure the isotope ratio back in 1987, and then go back three years later and measure the isotope ratios in 1990. I present these data as some of the first observations that were made showing the consistency in the rankings, the relative rankings of isotope ratios from year to year. The plant that had the relatively <clears throat> high CICA ratio and then very negative isotope ratio in 87 also had that same low value in 1990. And conversely, the plant had the highest carbon isotope ratio associated with the lowest CICA in 1987, also had the same value in 1990. The observation that there's a near one-to-one -one relationship is fortuitous, but the ranking, relative rankings, is not. We can observe variations in the carbon isotope ratio of C3 plants along environmental gradients, and George Stewart had one of the first observations about two decades ago, showing that if you went to tropical regions with high precipitation amounts, you'd find very negative carbon isotope ratio values. Whereas if you went to the arid lands with low precipitation, you had much heavier, much heavier or higher C13 isotope ratios. The variation in carbon isotope ratios reflects a long-term difference in the CIDC ratios in desert sites relative to tropical sites. We can find the same adjustment associated with different landscapes, such as in the same region, such as the ridges and slopes of the eastern deciduous forest relative to the valley bottoms. What we'll find is variation associated with site with ridges being drier sites relative to the valley bottom and variation with time. So that as we sample in wetter and wettier years, the carbon isotope ratios are more negative, reflecting higher CICA ratios in wetter years and in wetter habitats. We see an acclimation response also in plants that are exposed to water stress. In this case, we're going to look at halophytic plants, plants that are growing essentially in water all the time, but that there's variation in the salinity of that water as measured by the water potential of the media. If we take a low water stress condition, essentially salt-free, and a high water stress situation, essentially very salty, what we find is that the carbon isotope ratios become progressively heavier as plants are exposed to wetter environments, um, to saltier environments. This variation here is a stomatal variation. That is in Puccinellia and Salicornia. When they're exposed to saltier environments, the plants close their stomates and we have lower CICA ratios as salinity increases.